Welcome to the Twice the Speed documentary. Now, I'm taking you guys through the six and a half year journey that I went on as a business owner, as a trainer, and as a former athlete. Now, I started Twice Speed back in 2008, and it's now six years later. So in this documentary, I'm gonna take you through every step of the way from the initial parks I trained at through meeting CJ. Before I met him, I'm gonna show you everything I did, all the camps that I ran, all the kids that I met, as well as what happened when I met CJ. And I'm gonna take you through the journey, the four-year high school journey of Chris James. And you can see some of the behind-the-scenes stuff that no one's seen yet. Now, Twice Speed was founded back in the summer of 2008. And I'm here at the first park that I've ever trained at, my first team. Good, 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 go! All right, Greg, so you met me at this park, Centennial Park, Park Ridge. You met me six years ago, six summers ago. Explain kind of your experience. What are some of the things that you remember from um, back in those days? Um, well, I was extremely, extremely I was overweight, and uh, you helped me lose a lot of that weight. You got me started working out. You had us do a lot of unconventional stuff, like our coaches in football always just had us running, running running miles and all that and uh, you had us doing um, like all the jumps you showed on the internet so many times. How did that really change your career as far as mentally? Did, um, did it get you ready? Mentally, uh, yeah, because um, at football uh, our coaches are they're more, they're more old school so um, I would do their work because you, you have to do your coach's work and then I would train uh, your stuff. Mentally I knew I was faster than most linemen on the field. I was academic all state, I was two time all conference. Uh, so. You, you, everything you've talked really has helped out a lot. No, I definitely appreciate you being a part of Twice Speed. The foundation, you guys were the first group yeah, yeah. Of, of Twice Speed, so yeah. I, this is my way of paying it back and showing this yeah. is the exact part. We put in all those workouts with all these all these yeah. kids that are animals. All right, so you were another foundational member of Twice Speed here at here in Park Ridge. I mean, I had a group of, I think at the, the most athletes I had at once was like 56 over two hours. There's a ton of kids here. So what's your overall experience? What do you really remember from being one of those foundational members of Twice Speed six summers ago? Oh, I remember coming out here, Centennial, with about, you know, like you said, I know between 20 to 50 guys, just having fun, you know, it was a lot of unique stuff, you know, exercise we've never done before, and a lot of us hated it, you know, we hated the, the pain that went with it, but, you know, it got us better, it got us all more athletic, and uh, I gotta thank you for that. Yeah, appreciate that. What's your plan moving forward? So you're graduating now, going on to college? I'll be going to Northwestern University as a pitcher. I'm really Good. excited, and, you know, I attribute a lot of that to you. You know, you got my start really when you were one of my first trainers, and uh, you improved me. You know, it's weird, like your training speed, we also get better, you know, you get more powerful. I threw, I threw harder, I hit the ball farther, and I obviously ran better too. Do you have a, a moment or any time where you're like, man, this is really working? Yeah, I mean, you know, just going out there and, you know, dominating. <laughs> uh, just doing your thing. Just doing my thing, you know. <laughs> you know that when you're on the field, you know that you're, you've trained harder than your opposition, you know, you're doing a bunch of unique stuff, nobody's doing what you're doing, and, uh, you know, it just helps you out. All right, guys, so we just left the first park, Centennial Park. That's the first place that I ever trained any athletes, and I had a team, like I said, by the name of the Junior Hawks, and it was really, really cool to train these guys. There was 12 of them, and it turned into 70 kids by the end of the summer. So now we're leaving that park, and we're going to Evanston, Illinois. This is the second park that I ever trained at, James Park, and I actually had coached a couple of baseball teams out there, so I developed a lot of relationships with the kids, and I'll be able to show you guys and take you through the exact park and some of the exact fences that I jumped over in some of my viral videos that are on ESPN and some of the big sites. Here's the second phase of Twice Speed, and I'm about to get out of the car and show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, guys, we're here at James Park in Evanston, Illinois. Now, I told you at Centennial Park in Park Ridge, that's where I started Twice Speed. The next phase of Twice Speed was in Evanston. I moved over here, and I was training both in Park Ridge and Evanston, and I trained up to 200 athletes in Evanston, as well as I was a baseball coach on these fields right here from 11-year-olds to 14-year-olds for three years and some of the best times of my life. Now, I owe a lot to Evanston. I owe a lot to the community. They really helped Twice Speed get to where it's at, and it was also the foundation of my viral videos were all here. I jumped over this fence and ended up on ESPN. So I'm gonna cut away and show you some of those viral clips that made it on ESPN and some of the top internet blogs out there.
All right, so Joe, you met me five years ago when I was 21 years old. You were like 10. <laughs> and I just started I just started my training company. What was it that made you trust me and put your trust to me train your, train your son, Patrick? You, uh, you were young, you were 21, and I had a number of older guys who wanted to work with Patrick. But you were unbelievably committed, and you were 21 going on like 40. <laughs> there was just something, there was something that both Patrick and I trusted about you. You were so dedicated and committed because uh, this was one-on-one -on -one training, and, and you wanted to work with him at a real personal level, and I love that. All right, so Patrick and I trained for months. At, at what point did you really notice him getting better, becoming more agile, faster, more explosive? Were there other parents that even came up to you and noticed some changes in his play? Well, here's what's weird, Jack. Yes, I, and again, I'm a layman, but I noticed changes pretty quickly after a couple sessions with you. He was getting out of the batter's box a hell of a lot quicker. Um, he was, uh, like from here to here, he was quicker. Uh, whereas he used to sort of think and then get himself going. For some reason, after a couple sessions with you, his motor would go like this right away. And it just kept getting better. Uh, he's a good baseball player and you were a great baseball coach as well. Absolutely, after a few sessions, we had parents come up and ask, is Patrick working somebody? Who's he working with? And I said, I'm not gonna tell you, it's worth too much money. This is gold, I'm not gonna tell you. And, and did you ever notice anything of his personality change? Was he more confident on the field? Did you notice anything related to his confidence or you know, his swag? Well, <laughs> you know, uh, Patrick was probably one of the shyest kids you ever coached. Um, as he got quicker and faster and more agile, uh, it affected him up here. And he walked with a bit more of a swagger and he was more confident on the field uh, and around his teammates. He was more confident talking to his teammates because he felt better about how he was physically. So would you recommend me and Twice the Speed to be an advising role, play an advising role for athletes all around the world who are trying to make it to the next level and become the best that they can be? I wouldn't just recommend, I'd demand it. Uh, the cool thing was you worked with Patrick when he was like, what, 10 or 11? You've worked with older kids. What's interesting and I think really cool about you, Jack, is you can work with almost any age group. Again, there's a committed maturity about you. I would advocate what you do with twice the speed with anybody. It makes a profound difference no matter what sport a kid plays. What was it about me that made you give me your trust? Because you're a very picky kid when it comes to your training and your regimen. So explain a little bit about your career and what made you decide to work with me as your trainer. Um, so, you know, we, as, as athletes in college, you have your strength coaches. Um, and our strength coach was, was very qualified. Um, but in conversations you know, that I had with Jack, we, we talked on Facebook first, actually, I think before anything, uh, before that time we talked on Facebook, I think maybe the last conversation we had was when I threw him out when he was stealing second base. <laughs> you, did, you did throw me out. Barely, I got but uh, off. first I move, you. first move. But uh, no, you know what? Uh, just the, the difference in the way he approached it and the things that I needed to do as an athlete, um, and the way, and, and just how much passion and dedication, and just, just him, you knew that he was gonna get you better. You just knew he was gonna get you better. Um, th there's something that, it, it's hard to really explain in words, but there's just something when you're around him, you know he's going to make you better, whether it's training, whether it's you as a person, whether it's your personal goals, there's just something about him that you can't really, it's hard to explain in words. What was the one thing that really set me apart as a trainer throughout your process, and you played at the top level in high school, college, as well as professional. So what really stuck out in our relationship? Uh, from the very beginning, I remember uh, you said you would move across the country, move your entire life to the state of Mississippi from the city of Chicago. <laughs> so uh, just the fact that uprooting your entire existence, moving to another part of the country just to train somebody, and if that doesn't encompass everything that Twice the Speed is about, I don't know what does. Now we're in Mississippi, I'm a Chicago kid out there. I have the most Chicago accent out of all the people in the South. Yeah. Was there anything besides my accent that was very contagious to the people in the area, whether it was training related or just personality, or was there any contagious effect? Uh, personality, 100% for obvious reasons. Uh, training style, uh, yes, absolutely. And because what a lot of trainers will do is they'll go with the status quo and what the popular things are, uh, what gets you know supposed results for the past you know 20 years and what's a, a safe way to go about training safe meaning uh, nobody's gonna get on them nobody's gonna question what they're doing uh, but then there comes you and you come along and you say you know what, I'm gonna flip this entire thing around 
and I'm going to get the guys the best results that I possibly can. I don't care if people question what I may be doing uh, or any of my philosophies. I know what's going to work, and I'm going to get them to do it regardless of the backlash I'm going to get, maybe from other trainers in the training world, uh, you know, parents or whatever. And so we're there, and you know, we're training, and Nick Vickerson and then Jared Weston, those guys were both professional players, and they chose to work out with Jack instead of the, the coaches at you know, Mississippi State, almost immediately once they saw the, the results and the training that I was doing. Um, and even the coaches at, at Mississippi State, the trainers, uh, the strength coaches, whatever you want to call them, uh, they, <laughs> they started using a lot of things that Jack was having us do. So, you know, they would sit there and they would, first they were kind of a little bit, you know, pissed that we weren't really working out with them. They could kind of feel the vibes that we weren't really into, bought into what they were doing anymore. And then lo and behold, you know, I walk in there because I leave my bottle or, you know, my keys or something stupid and I go into one of their training sessions and after they'd sat there and watched Jack train us, they're starting to do the same things. So, I mean, it was almost immediate and it was funny kind of watching that process. Some of the kids watching, some of the people, parents even, may know who you are. You were a two-time All-State player in Illinois, one of the best players in the history of Illinois to come out. You actually got recruited by the number one school in the country at the time, Mississippi State. Yep. Four years started in the SEC. It's very rare for those of you who aren't from Illinois to get recruited to the South to play baseball. Then you were a two-time draft pick, first by the Dodgers, then by the Padres. Then you played with the Padres organization for a few years. Now, so you have a lot of insight, a lot, a lot of knowledge to share with the community. What's the one thing you would tell any young athlete who's watching this video right now, what they need to focus on, and one thing to take away from what you have to say? That you have the power to make your dreams come true. I would say the one thing is you have the power to make your dreams come true. And mine was always be a professional baseball player. Now, obviously, I was shooting for the big leagues, uh, but I came pretty damn close. And as an athlete and as a person, whatever your dream is, you have the power to make it happen. You just have to go out and do it. There's a ton of other trainers out there all across the world. There's a ton of other people out there. What made you choose to literally move from Maine <laughs> to come to Chicago for your entire summer after your senior year? What made you come to Chicago and put your trust in me? Right, well, one thing that stands out uh, about you that really attracted me um, was your outspoken. I, I can tell you're different, you know. There's definitely something that puts you apart from other trainers. Um, you know, people just want to be around you. And for me, um, you know, I was always a quieter guy growing up, and I know, you know, I want to be more outspoken, and that's something I've always wanted to work on. So I know surrounding myself with someone who's like that, uh, it's gonna get me to where I want to be. Hey, buddy, real quick, do you know who Chris James is? Yeah. What's the first word you think about when you hear his name? Fast. There you go. <laughs> you know Chris James? Yeah. What's the first word you think about when you hear his name? Awesomeness. Hey, quick question. You know who Chris James is? Yeah. What's the first word you think about when you hear his name? How about you guys? Do you know Chris James? No. You should. <laughs> hey, guys. Do you guys know who Chris James is? Yeah. What's the first word you think about when you hear his name? F***ing awesome. That's what he is. How about you guys? What's the first word? Chris James. Is that the same action? Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear the word Chris James, you obviously know him. What's the one word you think about that reminds you of him? Explosive. Explosive? Yeah, I, I watched him at a combine and uh, he came out on a cut and he hit the cut and like, it was like he shot, jumped off a trampoline. He just just exploded off. It was incredible. How about Ryan? So you know of Chris James, right. I know you play baseball. What's one thing that, from what you've seen of his highlights, what's one word that would describe him? Just a freak. Just crazy. Never yeah. seen another high school athlete like it. We're now headed to what you guys have all been waiting for. We're, we're gonna dive into some of the stuff that I did with CJ, Chris James, the phenom running back from Chicago, Illinois. He now plays at the University of Pittsburgh, but I met him back when he was 15 years old, his freshman year in November. And he came a long way. He was 173 pounds, now he's 212. He was running a five flat 40, and now he runs four, three, four, four consistently, and he's about 40 pounds heavier. So we're gonna take you through the exact story of how CJ and I met by starting with an interview from his grandmother, who's gonna kind of dive into his personal side and how twice speed changed changed him as an athlete and made him a man and took him to the next level, both mentally and physically. All right, so I'm here with Chris James, CJ's grandmother. Many of you guys already know who he is. This is an interview I'm really looking forward to doing. I kind of want to pick your brain and understand what CJ, how he matured throughout the four years and, and how he really turned from a younger kid at 15 and then he met me when he was that age and what type of impact do you think that Twice Speed and, and my, my mentorship had on CJ? Well, I think that it has had a 
great influence on Chris because he, like most boys, uh, need to have something to really occupy the, the time and also that will give them something other than gangs and drugs and other kinds of mayhem. Chris began to play the sport uh, when he was, I believe, in sixth grade and he became progressively passionate about it. He didn't want to attend an all-boys school, but I insisted. And there he met Jack, and um, Jack, I'm sure, recognized that he had some skills and talents that needed to be developed. So he, in essence, took him under his wings, and the rest is history. Uh, Chris became more passionate about the sport. He loved to go to practice, and he talked about Jack constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my little brother? <laughs> um, and uh, I was quite pleased. I'm just amazed at all of the achievements that Chris has yeah, made. We actually have a whole book right here that she put right, it together with right. all he sorts of uh, <laughs> all his awards, pictures. He's been in the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Sometimes, Stack Magazine, on every blog you could possibly imagine. Absolutely. Um, and as you guys know, a lot of them know him from the internet from some of the videos. He has millions of views on YouTube. Right. Great personality. Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure because of Jack's influence, Chris, um, you know, he may, he achieved uh, much more than he would have, I think, had he not been uh, under Jack's wings. And um, he, uh, I'm sure too, that he would not have gotten all of the offers. He got offers yeah. from I think 20 plus 21 school. schools. And these are all Division One schools, very good schools, very rigorous. So I'm very hopeful about that. And that's basically yeah. it. <laughs> that's good. Well, to four years, uh, thank you for letting me be a part of your life. Yeah, well, Appreciate thank it. you, Jack. Four more years. And we could college. Be, yes, <laughs> yep. absolutely. Uh, yeah, CJ's growth here in the last four years has been phenomenal. And uh, part of the reason is, uh, you know, Jack has spent a lot of time, a lot of extra time with uh, Chris and uh, developing him. With uh, the extra uh, work that Chris has put in and the extra time that uh, Jack has worked with him, has really turned the corner. It's really made him a, a definite D1 prospect and, and uh, somebody to watch in the future play on Sundays. I, I think some of the stuff that Jack has uh, put forth in front of uh, Chris, Chris has really taken hold of uh, because some of, the, some of his workouts are a little bit different than we do here at uh, Notre Dame and probably in other uh, high schools and colleges around where uh, Chris has uh, really worked hard with what Jack has put in front of him. Uh, and it's been a little bit different, but it's helped him a lot more. And he's taken him to another level because of that. I win. I won. <laughs> CJ's the scrub. <laughs> Great route, very fluid in drills, and awesome feet. Great field speed, very coachable, awesome athlete, and a better individual. Today, he was also our fastest man. He ran a 4 5 three, four. And then after that, he ran a 4 5 four, four. He had a 9 9 broad jump. He had a 4 4 3 shot. Big press 135, 25 times. Had a 32 inch vertical leap and all at 181 pounds. Awesome. Coming from Notre Dame High School in Illinois, 
Chris Chang. Right so, so how much are you going to dominate today? Um, I'm going to dominate. You're going to win the MVP? Of course. I've been training for this. Um, yeah, a lot of my teammates are going, you know, trying to see the competition level and everything. So, Swag. ready? Swag. You know, hashtag. Come catch me if you can. Follow me on Twitter. Can't be stopped. The B and E. The B, the three. The E is a three for a reason. Because my number's three. CJ3, you heard it here first. Just wrapped up the combine. Um, we're at 4-4 four, four flat 40. Couldn't do it without twice the speed. So I guess you could say I had a pretty good day. I mean, I've been working for it. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of excited right now. I don't even know what to say right now. I've been working for this. You already know. Let's get this. Indianapolis, here we come. You excited? You excited for Wisconsin visit? Yeah. <laughs> it was a good game last night. Good day. How many touchdowns? Six. How many yards? 270. Oh boy. All right, so this is CJ here. This is uh, Jack, and this is the flip toss. I don't need an introduction. Oh, he doesn't need an introduction. See, earlier today I got an offer from Michigan State University, and we're planning on going to Pittsburgh to go to the University of Pitt. We were planning on going. We decided. Well, that we it's decided on the way. halfway, but he doesn't really want to go. And I kind of want to go, so we decided to come down to the lucky old quarter. So, coin toss. You call it. What do you want? I have to tell. Heads. 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 Heads, we, heads, we go to Pittsburgh. Let it fall to the floor, man. Zoom in on it. Get it. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Wait. Let's get it. All right, guys, so we made it to the final stop, Players U. It's out in Mount Prospect, Illinois. I trained CJ here. I have a lot of behind the scenes footage, which I'll show you. And this is where all the magic happens. This is where we put in hours and hours of work inside here on the turf. So without further ado, I'm gonna take you guys inside and show you what it's all about. And here it is, the beautiful 25,000 square foot facility, full weight room, full turf, track, rehab center, little mini court, golf center, batting cages, you name it, they have it. This is an awesome facility. Um, I've done a lot of cool workouts with CJ, and if you're ever in Illinois, it's a great place that you guys should be checking out. All right, right here, the 40 yard, the 40 yard dash. This is CJ's famous 43740. He ran it right here. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I actually have some of the footage of exactly what happened before and after we ran this 40, and I had the stopwatch on tape for you. A little sock change. <laughs> Socks too thick. <laughs> These little spike colors are nice. Some good spikes. It's true. <laughs> Four three today. How did it feel your first four three? Feels good. My feet hurt, but <laughs> feels good. Grind time, baby. Yeah, yeah, the grind continues. Four three seven. Another one in the books. Hell yeah. So CJ, you and I have known each other now for a little over four years. You met me when you were 15 years old, and you put a tremendous amount of trust 
in Jack Casio, in Twice the Speed, in the whole brand. What was it that really sold you on wanting to work with, with me as a trainer and, and be a part of the Twice the Speed movement? Well, the main thing was I wanted to bring my training to a whole other level. I knew that I had the potential to become, you know, like maybe one of the first kids to go D1 for my school. So when the opportunity presented itself, I had to jump on it. So I'm glad that, you know, I met Jack and the whole Twice Speed family and was able to make an impact. So CJ, I met you back when I was 22, 23 years old. You were only 15. What was it about me and about the workouts that made you stick with it for over four years? That's a long time to commit as an athlete. You stuck with it all the way through. We were doing four or five workouts a week for four years. What Was there one thing that really stood out to you about the workouts? Well, Jess, you know, you changed my confidence. That was the main thing. You made me um, want to work out, want to see improvement, want to see progress. And it's the fact that you were so young just made you so much more relatable. You know, only about maybe eight to ten years older than me. So it was kind of like, well, you know, this guy has been there, been, been there, done that. And, you know, he's someone I can actually relate to. So, CJ, you and I have had some awesome times together on and off the field. I guess I call it field because training, we train on the field a lot or weight room. But off the field, what's, like, the best time you ever had? Like, one of the funniest things that, that you and I have been through. Like, some of the memories that we built. Is there any memory that sticks out to you? Uh, the visits and definitely the competitions. Um, the back-to-back -back on the 40. You think you're faster than me, and, and just all the jumping competitions, so all, all that stuff. I mean, it's just some of the memories I'm going to cherish forever. Throughout our relationship, there's been a lot of stuff that we've done off the field. We've gone on these trips. We've been to what, like 15 states together. What is something that's really helped you as a person, not as an athlete, just your overall? You already mentioned confidence, but is there anything that really stuck out personality-wise or any type of energy that you have now? Uh, well, just to uh, attack the day. That's the main thing, and just to try to dominate in everything. You know. When I got the bands for Team Loyal, I didn't take it just for the athletic side, but also for academics and everything. So if I, so if I have a test coming up, you know, I'm planning on dominating in that. So, that was, so that's my short-term goal. That's the main thing. I was just trying just to um, have the very attack the day mentality and just um, try to dominate everything I do, not just athletically, but academically, personally, personally, and just everything off the field. Over the last four years, you've been extremely competitive. Like you already said, you and I used to battle each other and, and race against each other in the 40. What was the main motivator for you as an athlete uh, to really become the fastest guy? I don't even know how many awards you won as the fastest man like every year and your broad jumping your vert. What really motivated you as an athlete besides the obvious of playing D1 and getting to the next level? Um, I just think just seeing the progress because obviously if you're getting faster that means that your workouts are working. And, uh, if you're getting faster that means that you're putting enough time in the weight room and that you're training as well. So that was the main thing. So I'm glad that you know, I, I was still hungry, you know, even though I ran a 4 4 I'm still hungry, you know. So right now I'm running like a 4 4 but I want to get down to a 4 3 When I get down to 4 3 I want to get down to 4 2 So my progress and my development is going to always keep on going because that's just the person I am. That's the person that twice speed has made me. So as long as I'm staying hungry, and that's the main thing for me, I just want to keep on seeing progress in my speed and my training. Would you recommend twice the speed to play a mentoring role in a, in a young athlete? So if you were to go back, to your freshman year or recommend it to a young athlete, would you say twice speed is the way to go? Absolutely. I think um, if you're willing to bring your training and you want to bring your training to another level, see progress on and off the field, just have the confidence and everything just to attack the day, absolutely. Twice speed is the answer. When you hear the name Jack Cassio, what do you think in one word? Uh, genius, guru, uh, definitely a, a workout guru. If I could do it again, you know I'd do it the same We got our room at the beach club in It was a dump, but we didn't care Between the cruising and the beach and the clubs We were hardly ever there We'd get drunk and raise some hell And I'd play my guitar in the sand And everyone would come and sing along And the pretty girls would dance The Florida shore, it really put a spell on me Turned a quiet Sunday school boy into the life of the party. Yeah. If I could do it again, you know I'd do it the same. I'd pass out on the beach drinking golden rain and I'd wake up covered in the sand with that bottle in my hand. The night go for a swim and start drinking again. No, I'd break all the rules just like I used.